Hey everybody and welcome to part 2 of the Canary Mines Park playthrough. Now in the previous episode we made a pretty solid start to the park. We're almost up to a thousand guests already out of the 1300 required so things are ticking along pretty nicely. Uh, we added three additional coasters to the vertical drop races. Uh, we also made some changes to the green racer where we uh, took away a bit of the length of it and uh, you know reduced its overall footprint and improved its synchronization with the yellow racer. So I think that worked out pretty well. Um, but in this episode we're going to be focusing more on the gentle rides uh, just to cater for the guests that you know don't uh, want a roller coaster necessarily. Uh, so the first thing we add in here is a log flume. Now uh, log flumes are something I tend to avoid uh, in the original version of the game mainly because their throughput is just atrocious. Um, so unlike RCT2 where you basically you have an unlimited supply of boats uh, you're limited by the number of station platform pieces you have here. So in this one here, we've only got eight boats, and even for you know a short to medium length uh, log flume here, the throughput for that is just terrible. Uh, in addition to that, I also made the queue line a little bit too long. So you know by the time the guests got to the ride, they were like pretty annoyed. So uh, anyway, having said all of that, I really liked the way this log flume kind of brought all of this terrain together. It was kind of an awkward space. I mean, I, it took a while to figure out what to do here, but you know, I think the log flume worked out pretty well, the way it just kind of winds down into the, into the basin there. So yeah, that turned out pretty well. I was pretty happy with that. Um, it's loosely based, uh, it's called Waterworld. Uh, yeah, it's loosely inspired off a show at Universal Studios in Los Angeles. Uh, it's you know based on a dystopian future where uh, the world's basically been uh, ravaged by um, you know melted glaciers and there's hardly any land left and it's a real uh, yeah it's, it's basically just a big scrapyard um, so that's why there's a bit of a massive scenery going on just kind of barrels laid about everywhere uh, yeah I think it turned out pretty well I put in a little paddle wheel there just because I wanted something, you know, uh, mechanical, kind of moving around, um, you know, to give give the guests something interesting to look at as they uh, slowly meander through the channel. Uh, so, yeah, as I mentioned in the previous part, my plan was to add a water splash section to the wooden coaster there. Um, it took a while to unlock, um, but we do put that in later. Um, in addition to that, I also put in a bit of a reservoir there to kind of... Um, blend the splash section in with, uh, with the coaster nicely. Uh, so yeah, I think that turned out pretty well. I then went in and used the River Rapids track to kind of put in a bit of a channel connecting that reservoir that I put in to the basin down in the bottom of the mine. Um, you know, I don't know how realistic that is, but you know, I thought it tied in those two areas together quite nicely. So yeah, I was, I was happy enough with how that turned out. Uh, yeah, I'm just going in and putting a few extra details around, kind of filling in all those little awkward spaces. Um, I put in a little car ride there just to get the window in the uh, in that fake building there. Uh, yeah, you, you can't get building or you can't get uh, you know wall pieces with uh, windows in them in the original version of the game, so you kind of have to stick a ride into the terrain basically to get the kind of window. Uh, effects that you're after so it's a bit of a pain but you know it worked out. Uh, so yeah the next thing I'm doing here is a bit of a nature trail actually. It's uh, something a bit different it's not particularly uh, you know it's not profitable or anything but you know I thought it would be nice to kind of use the top of the hill here to put in a bit of a nature walk. Uh, so yeah it's it's not too exciting it's literally just a dirt path and I put in a huge amount of trees just kind of scattered everywhere um, and yeah the idea was to just have somewhat of a forest uh, section where the guests could kind of you know take their time and just enjoy enjoy some nature. I put in a bit of a lookout at the top of the hill there too just because I thought you know it would be uh, that would be appropriate kind of looking out back over the entrance of the park. Uh, finally unlock the water splash section there so that's uh, that's all in and done now so um yeah, that actually added a quite a lot of excitement rating to the coaster, which was nice to see. Uh, it also took a shaved a bit of speed off the uh, that last corner there, which was which was good. So the intensity rating dropped by quite a bit too. 
Um, yeah, go in and just fill in a few little areas here just with some bushes and trees. Uh, that mini coaster there called Forest Revenge that um, I thought that would be appropriate kind of at the base of the forest. Um, so yeah, I just put in a few extra trees to kind of, you know, give it a, I don't know, somewhat of a ant feel from Lord of the Rings. You know, these angry tree families that have been chopped down over the years because of the mining operations. So that was the uh, thinking behind that. Uh, so then I go in and build a car ride. Uh, so the idea here was, well, the uh, the mine, I'm guessing back in the day, uh, a lot of the miners would have lived close by. So I wanted to kind of put a little mining town at the top of the mountain here. Um, and the idea was to just put in, you know, a bunch of the mine huts and uh, kind of theme out this area nicely. Um, I used the vintage cars to give, uh, you know, uh, I thought it was the most appropriate kind of vehicle to use. No, I could have used the pickup trucks, but they only allow one person in the vehicle at one time, so uh, the vintage cars have a capacity of two per, per car, so I thought that would be a little bit better for throughput. Um, so yeah, I spend quite a lot of time uh, going in and decorating this area here. Uh, so yeah, we put in uh, quite a few of the huts. Uh, so there's only two available. In the mining theme set um, so to kind of make sure that it didn't look too one-dimensional uh, I made sure to apply the rotation to basically all of them and you know even even doing that it, it, it doesn't it make it makes it look uh, you know diverse enough even though they're the same building just uh, rotating it uh, can make it look you know different enough uh, so that worked out pretty well um, yeah, I put in a bit of a pathway. The idea here would be that, you know, in if this was a real park, you'd, I don't know, you might have some entertainers around the place. I didn't put any entertainers in. Looking back, that was probably a missed opportunity, but yeah, we had to put a handyman there to keep those gardens watered, um, which is probably a bit of a waste of money, but yeah, whatever. Uh, yeah, go back in and use the terrain to put in some, you know, uh, something a bit different to the mine huts kind of you know do some fake building work there which uh, I think looked all right it was uh, there wasn't really any cohesion to this area it was uh, there was no real you know pathway through connecting all the buildings but you know it's a theme park whatever so I go back and put in some uh, souvenir stalls just to you know fill out a little bit of space there and uh, souvenir stalls actually they you can bump up the price of the uh, cuddly toys by a fair bit so they actually became pretty good money makers in the end the last thing I do here is add in some uh, pipelines which I thought you know that would be a appropriate kind of artifact of a uh, mining operation around anyway that's going to be just about it for the episode uh, thank you guys very much for watching and we will see you next time cheers bye